Welcome to Point to Rise, your podcast that gives you permission to dream big, take messy action, and turn your talent into profit while turning your back on perfection. My name is Suzanne Purcell, high performance and mindset coach, former international ballerina, profitable entrepreneur, and founder of Point to Rise, a movement designed to empower dancers. It is my mission to use my own story as an inspiration for today's generation of dancers. And now sit back, stretch, warm up, or zip your coffee and love learning how much it matters to point at yourself first to rise to all that you are capable of. I love her. She's new. She tells us now when we're recording and when we're not recording. We should call her a name like Beth. We should. Yeah. Who? Beth. Sure. Beth. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> happy Monday. Um, well, happy Thursday. Whatever it is, whenever you're listening to this, we are back. Now, my darling Christy, you have had a big weekend. Um, tell us all about your crazy, crazy adventure from yesterday. Yeah, I went skydiving with my husband oh, yesterday. <laughs> So funny scenario, and this is why I'm learning over and over to not make absolutes and not say never to something. Cause that was a, that was on the top of my never will I ever list. And this past year has really <laughs> changed a lot of things for me in my perspective of, um, you know, life is precious how do you know that you don't want to do something until you do it? I mean, even to that extent. And so how can I say I'm not going to like it if I don't do it? And when I really thought about all the reasons why it was like, I mean, I guess it's kind of logical, but also Ill like a, a bit, these guys literally jump like 10 times a day. And I was like, you know, I don't even do anything. So <laughs> Um, this was a Christmas present, but my husband actually hurt his back months back and we haven't felt comfortable, like actually doing it until now. So, um, this was an impromptu Christmas present that I just said, he's been wanting to do this forever. You know what? I actually want to do this. Like why the heck not after, after everything, <laughs> it, like, let's just do it. And, you know, I'm really happy I did. It was it was, I feel changed. I feel like I can do anything now. I really do. Like that was so intense. It was actually, it was really intense. It was really intense. Um, but in a good way, you don't feel like you're falling first because there's so much like resistance that you're cutting through. You really, it doesn't, You. it just feels like a lot of wind everywhere. It feels like if you took one of those like big, big, big fans and put like 50 of them in front of you, that's what's happening to you. But you don't really feel like you're falling those first couple seconds out of the plane for sure. And then after that, it feels kind of like you're floating. And then once the parachute deployed, it, it was just like beautiful. So I'm really happy I did it. Um, I definitely had um, an energy rush that lasted throughout the day. Whereas the day got later, I was like, I jumped out of a plane today. Oh my God. I jumped out of a plane today. And it kind of didn't hit me for a while, <laughs> but I'm really glad I did it. And now my husband wants to be a professional, um, skydiver that does stand up jumps. <laughs> so we might be career changing. <laughs> Oh my God. You know, I, if, um, if you're not like, I'm going to cry and have a panic attack in the plane and you're kind of like, I don't know, maybe I say do it because I look, I used it as a growth tool for presence. Yesterday was me practicing presence of, I'm not going to freak out. Cause I'm just sitting here waiting. I'm not going to freak out. Cause I'm just in the plane and then I'm out of the plane. Don't freak out. Like you're here. So <laughs> enjoy, now. The view. <laughs> enjoy the view. <laughs> So, you know, I, um, that's something I'm really focusing on right now is presence. And that was an ultimate growth test. So I'm, I'm really, really happy I did it. And I actually, I will totally do it again. 
in in a like cool area we were already talking about like areas of the world we'd like to see from 14 or 18,000 feet <laughs> so I see that you probably will not be joining me on one of those. <laughs> oh, so here's here's the thing. Um, definitely on my uh, and never ever will I do yeah. something like this. Okay, <laughs> definitely on that list. Here's the thing, though. Um, you can use things like that as the ultimate growth. So mm -hmm. a you can, and I'm 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 sure. You can tap into this kind of feeling of complete acceleration and, and the knowing that I just did something really, really hard. Not yeah. everybody can do, and therefore I can do other hard things too. I literally like said that. that. Everything yeah. else after this is easy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this would be certainly something a former version of myself never could have done. I told Jay, I literally, I would have had a panic attack in the, in the plane. Like I just, I know I always was like anticipating the future. I never could have mentally gone through with it. So, you know, we all get to a point where things like that are possible or at least get into the sphere of being possible. Um, I felt a little nauseous because... <laughs> just going through the motion of you being in a plane. It's like, okay, but what is the worst thing that can happen? Like literally, what is the worst thing? Um, and, and this is what I'm learning now through my journey and finding back, building back up a relationship with my body itself, because there was so much resistance there too. And we, we keep on, we kept on fighting, you know, um, and I had such big aha moments over the past week in, in terms of, hey, workout doesn't need to be hard. It doesn't need to be a struggle. It does not need to be all of these things that I have been trained. I don't need to fight my body in order to, oh, wait, I can actually feel energized and great after my workout. Whoa. So these are all, all stories that I am letting go of right now. And I believe you getting to the point of jumping out of a plane is just the same thing. Letting go of stories, letting go of trying to protect the future um, and convincing yourself that you are in danger or letting your ego convince yourself better. Yeah. Self, right. Yeah. Because and it's a funny thing. It's and it's something that we are all really hardwired in this world to to have. Um, that mode of and in, in thinking, but when you really get back into the presence, you you think you're in danger and you're sitting in an airplane, or, you, or I would you know I hadn't even gotten into the airplane yet. So to to anticipate all of that, it's literally imaginary, and and that having that awareness and continuously practicing it and putting myself in a situation that would really make my mind run wild or want to run wild, to say anything that happens that's not what I clear, I, this moment look around and see is imaginary. It's right. imaginary. And that just helps us in our everyday life too. When we do doomsday um, thoughts about ourselves or about what's going to happen or about an audition. And it's like, th that's imaginary, but it feels real because we have a chemical reaction in our bodies to our thoughts. And that's why our thoughts are so important, which is why I'm like, just the biggest advocate of this now. And I feel so passionate about it because I just realized like I lived in an imaginary world my whole life. <laughs> yeah, because I was, we never never, I was never present. And we never learned what that yeah. actually meant, right? And yeah. we never learned the importance of our thoughts yeah. and what they're able to create. And you, you said something so interesting. You know, we have the ability as human beings to create in our thoughts, the future that we're afraid of. Yeah. So what if we would actually turn that around and use that as something, you know, it is harder for sure because we're not hardwired that way. It takes practice and it takes more attention and awareness. However, it's just as possible. You can create anything in your mind and you might as well create something that is exciting and useful and something that you're looking forward, something that you really want. And, and therefore, you can actually get there too. Yeah. 
And that's the fascinating part. That's the part where there is so much resistance I'm seeing. It's like, oh, I can't create that. But you can go and think and, and live into your doomsday yeah. um, <laughs> proclamation over and over and over again and, and, and roll yourself in it. But you're not willing to feel joy. Yeah. What is wrong? What we're going to talk about today. Exactly. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> that was, that was so good. Piss myself on the show. <laughs> we didn't talk about your week though. Oh, my week. Okay. So we're talking about worthiness today and what that has to do with actually um, our ability to earn money and worthiness in the arts, particularly and the worthiness of the arts as an empire or an industry and its ability to earn money. So hang tight, grab a coffee or a tea or both and buckle up. But how was my <laughs> week? Um, oh, shoot. It was so good and so eye-opening. Um, I have come to this point where I can now watch what's going on. It's like, oh, yeah. so I had this huge trigger and I just recorded a podcast um, episode about it. Uh, in a mastermind, we're going really deep into like what's going on on the inside. And I just, I put my hand up. I was like, okay, this needs to come out. I'm looking for validation from my mother. And I started crying and I'm like, oh my gosh, is that all you need? in order to break free, in order to step into your full potential? Is that all you really need? And then hearing the words, you're never going to get it, Susie. Mm. Like, uh, yeah, you're right. I know that. Mm -hmm. But my heart doesn't yet. So yeah. what are the steps to get there? It was though such a big relief because all of a sudden it was off of my plate. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It was just something that just the realization, I didn't even need it to be solved. It just gave me such peace of mind that this is still here. Yeah. It's okay. It's not going to be in my way anymore. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And it just needs to get out. It needs to get out of you. It doesn't have to get resolved. Yeah. And I apologize for crying. And I'm like, oh, wow, where are we? Where are we? Um, and it's taking all of these steps in order to, I don't know, is it the peace or, you know, when we are not aligned with who we are, when we keep fighting, when something is keep pulling on us, we're also not able to take inspired actions and the actions that we should be taking, right? Because we can't even think of them. They're not even coming into our mind. And I know exactly that when I am sitting and like, Oh, what should I be doing now? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's not actually the, the reason. Like, this is not, the, no, there's something else you need to explore. So there was a lot, a lot of that. Um, had a great um, implementation call for Rice Media. Um, yeah, it is a rolling, rolling, rolling. Um, yeah, so that was my week. Love it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Worthiness. Shall we talk about? Let's talk about worthiness. Yes. Quite honestly, I don't even know where to start because it is such a big, big ball of wax and fire. Um, I think let's start with the industry itself or the arts itself in, in society and its feeling of worthiness. Do you have some thoughts around it? If not, I can start. Well, I don't know if this is the direction you wanted to go in. So stop me if, if it isn't. But what just popped in for me as you said that was that for me was how I thought I had my own worthiness because I felt special in this industry. I liked that I felt like a unicorn amongst regular people and that is why I was so obsessive about my career was because that was really the only thing I was clinging on to, to help me feel good because I felt special because I felt like the arts was 
special and brought a special type and i'm using the word special i really do think we are all special i'm speaking in terms of the my viewpoint then um i felt like you know we 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 are a um special breed we have a special gift so we the arts are special i'm not saying that they're not um I, I liked that. I liked that um, exclusivity. I felt like I was in a club. And um, so that was, it was like the eccentricness of, I wasn't like most people that allowed me to feel worthy. And, and that's why I was actually surprised to find that I felt so unworthy because I had clouded it in, in just being able to be like, like I said, a unicorn, like somebody, somebody that somebody stares at. And so that was how I thought worthiness felt like. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> you know what? Wearing that unicorn cost costume all the time. Yeah. Thinking we're, we are a special exclusive breed that uh -huh. um, has all of these privileges and these were only disguise of what was really going on underneath the surface i would say so i i 100 agree and i want to stretch this out a little bit because i i believe that is actually the industry in its essence ballet theater whatever you're into believes like every entity believes they're the very best they believe yeah. they're yeah so exclusive that yeah. nobody else can beat them and and nobody else can ever reach their potential and 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 okay mm -hmm. and that truly is just a <laughs> a show that is being put on right yes in order to to um cover up, powder up, put the layers of makeup on that really show the true faces. And I don't believe the arts in itself think of themselves as a worthy contributor, that's a really hard word, to society because it is depending on funding from outside. It's not building its own wealth. No. It doesn't have the power to sustain itself as an entity without, and I'm not against help, but with nothing without somebody else giving them money. You know, right. it's it's always the fight for survival. Yeah. And that's where did the true unworthiness comes to light, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. okay, so something else just dropped in. It's like you said that putting on a show. So from all sides of the industry, <clears throat> a show is being put on. And in that sense, from the other levels and the other sides of this industry, putting on a show for funding and supporters. And, you know, we're, we're all putting on a show. We're putting on a show to get cast and hired and they're putting on a show to, to survive, to put on the next season, to fund the tour, to, you know, like that we're all putting on a show. And, um, and so to add to that just a, a bit is, I feel like that's why we might feel we're worthy, but the ego is, is so cloaked over that because of, because of this, because of what you just said, the, the way the industry is, everybody's doing tricks and dances for each other to just operate. And so that is why for me, I took such a hard turn when I started to take a deeper dive in myself because I realized how driven by my ego, all of my actions and intentions were. And, and that put a bad taste in my mouth. And then that made me decide that it was worth it to go through what you're going through now too and do the internal work to get to the bottom of it because it just didn't feel good anymore. I was tired. 
I was really, I was really tired of not feeling enough ever and pretending like I was and not knowing why I didn't feel like enough. Mm. Um, the pretending, yeah. the loss of its identity or oneself's identity. And I am just looking up um, on my phone here quickly, what are actually um, habits of, or behaviors of unworthiness? Like how do mm -hmm. they show, show up in our, um, yeah. How do they show up in our life, really? Yeah. Because they come in disguise, you know? They're oh, not yeah. just like unworthy, 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 unworthy. They're yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And we may just not even knowing them, what we're actually doing that that has to do with um, not feeling worthy. And quite honestly, most of what we're doing or not doing or what we're keeping ourselves away from actually comes back to the core of not feeling worthy of yes. having it, um, stepping into dealing with relationships, all of this. So when we're thinking, and while I'm looking this up, um, I would love it if you, um, we know this, I don't need to look this up. Um, when I look at, let's just say companies in itself, the behavior that we're seeing from last minute schedule changes to um, and not giving proper wages, not giving proper rest times in between, um, talking unkindly and disrespectful in rehearsals, having you work 12 hours and repeating the same show dance rehearsal over and over and over again. It comes all down to the survival instinct. It comes all down to not feeling worthy of existing or being there because nothing will ever will fill that hole of, of that feeling of unworthiness. And that's where we as human beings, we go and we, we, we try to gather it from the outside because we can't find it in here. Yeah, I, yeah. I think we're done here. <laughs> Yes, it's lack. Ultimately, <clears throat> the unworthiness and the lack uh, um, pretty much go hand in hand. It's it, And it's everything that you just said, the lack of um, having a lack mentality around money. So you're stingy with the funding. So to, regardless of how much is coming in, you, you know, trickle out as thin as you can go because you have a lack mentality that you won't get more funding, that you don't have donors that love your company or theater enough to pay your entertainment what they are worth. So you pay them less, you know, like there's, there's that mentality. And then from the dancer's perspective, there's a lack mentality of there's only so many spots. There's only so many understudies. There's so many, whatever. And so everybody's just living under this lack bubble too, which yeah. is that survival mode. So then that fires in us, you know, that anxiety chemical. And so all of us, and then that brings us into that future worry because we're worried about money. We're worried about the role. We're worried about not having another contract and everybody's not living for right now. And we're all anxious and we're all dancing around trying to um, impress somebody else to get what we want from the external because we need that role. We need, I needed, I needed my consistent work. I needed to be on stage. Like, and, and that former version of me needed to be on stage because that's what filled me without it. I felt like I was, I, and I will say this, it sounds very drastic, but it was where I was at. I felt worthless if I wasn't on stage. So I needed that because I didn't know how to find it in myself. And I didn't even know that that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. I thought we all had to find things and people to fill us up. I didn't, I didn't even know I could fill my own cup or how to do that. And I first heard about this. Oh yeah. You, you just you know, find your worthiness from yourself. I'm like, pardon me, what? That's a thing. We do that. That's possible. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Right. 
because that was never and and for me it was even like I went all the way back to my childhood of not feeling worthy of my parents love of not feeling worthy of you know being seen and then trying to achieve that love in other ways by either misbehaving or overachieving or you know all, all the things um so let's let's back it up so when we are in this lack mentality in the the, the thought of unworthiness particular in the arts as an industry um i believe that it really does trickle down from the top because we take on the energy of what we're stepping into into the environment right and this is why we're perpetuating this this cycle of stress and abuse and lack and unworthiness over and over again because we haven't changed the switch up here we haven't adjusted the thermostat yet we haven't really ask different questions and i this this came up when you were speaking that when we're living in this lack mentality we're also um taking away our ability to think differently we're taking away our ability to ask different questions questions that could come up with solutions and we're we're stop we would we would actually be stopping to dwell in the problems and 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 seek all the drama because that that isn't where the worthiness is at, you know? So it doesn't it though come back to the money and where the money is coming from and how it is produced? Like every time um, we're going through the cycle, I'm like, wait a second. But if we were, if a body company would be able to just you know, bring in 70% of their income or 80 or 90 and have like very little funding efforts and activities left. Imagine the energy that we as a company, as an industry would gain back in order to create, yeah. create for other people, not for survival. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, can I not get too deep here, but everything is energy. And we've talked about this in other episodes where <clears throat> you can walk into a room and not really know why you, you, your mood changes, but you, but it does. So, you know, if we're talking in terms of money and we have a scarcity mindset, that's nervous about whether there's enough money, it's a trickle down. So it's going to trickle down into whoever's running the room and they're going to feel it. And whether it's directly involving them, it's still now put on them. So that energy is put on them, which is now in them as they go run a rehearsal, which affects the energy of the room. So it, it is a trickle down and, and everybody might not know why there's tension in the room, but there just is, and you feel it. And whether you have a, an awareness of energy or not, everybody really does, whether they can acknowledge it or not. You can tell when a room feels heavy and when it feels, you know, so excited. And this, this is the most exciting thing to have this rehearsal today. So yeah, that, I mean, even from that end, it affects it. And, and mm. the energy is affected by external things many times and and I mean always money is the biggest um <laughs> the biggest thing right now and this in the way this world works right now money is king and it's on everybody's mind so yeah yeah but so here if it's on everybody's mind and if it's king and if we're giving it all of its power mm -hmm. um or all of our power yeah then what on earth are we doing to actually make it? Are we sitting in our chairs and depending on other people to bring it in? Or are we going to start asking different questions? What can I do? How can we, how can we create? Because it is energy and with that, you can create it. Like just opening up your mind and thinking about what other ways could be opened up to creating 
more funding so that you know having the best intention at heart i sometimes doubt it i sometimes doubt that people walk into the studio in the morning and have their very best attention at heart yeah <clears throat> Yeah, that's definitely what I saw. So it is about creating, like you can create anything that you want to, and that goes for money too. And it's, you know, looking at what are entrepreneurs doing? Like why are the arts not looking how entrepreneurs are actually thinking, working, their productivity, their mindset? You can learn it so much from that world. This is why you and I are talking every yeah. week because yeah. there's so many parallels that we can draw. Yeah. Well, I think we popped the same idea in at the same time just now. Cause I, I was thinking as you were speaking, um, <clears throat> you know, just because you've always had a certain donor or a certain list of donors or a certain company what, that sponsors your company, whatever it is, um, as much as you can look at the world and lack, there's there's so much money in this world and there's so many people with money. So if you, if you just stick to what you've done for the last 20 years and you don't move into all these opportunities that have opened up, I mean, even in the last like five years with, with social media and just digital aspects that you could advertise in different ways to have a different audience, and maybe modernize your audience who does have money and who would contribute would really change everything. I mean, even, even if it wasn't donors, but if it was the page, it changed your patron numbers because you were exposed to more eyes by getting a little innovative. Like, like you said, like an entrepreneur, if you, whether you think that your company is too esteemed for a TikTok or an Instagram page or whatever, like they're, they're not, cause that's what people want to see. And if you did backstage things or someone took over the Instagram page, one of your principal dancers or something like that, and you started to expose an audience that does, doesn't know the arts or aren't exposed to the arts and they see it, maybe they would fall in love with it and, and fall in love with, even if it's a particular dancer or your company as a whole, and would start funding you or would start being a, a seasonal patron of yours. Like, I think, um, I think it's to all of our detriment, no matter what we're doing to fall back on laurels or what, what's worked. What worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because look at the companies that didn't move with the times over the last couple decades, they're not here. If they didn't change their model in any way, they're not here anymore. Stuff I had as a kid now, it doesn't exist. Like the certain stores don't exist anymore because they didn't move with where the world was going. Um, and, and I just think with the digital age, you're able to expose your company, your brand, your business, whatever you're doing on a global scale. But if you don't do that, and if you stay small, what yeah. you've always done yeah so it, it's not going to grow on its own and i think the arts i think the arts would have more support and more of a draw if this just came in if we didn't treat it like it's an exclusive club yes <laughs> Yes, 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 exactly. That's too good for everyone that doesn't yeah. fit the mold of what we think they should be. Because wasn't it made for the donors? So yeah. when we're really backing this up and, and like peeling the onion back, how many donors actually dictate what the company is producing, hiring, running, what the show's gonna look like? You know, so a small percentage. Yeah, they have their input. But you, ha you can have their input. However, the repertoire is also <laughs> tailored to the people that they think are coming and financing yeah. the, the company. And with that, um, you really truly only tailoring your offering to that small percentage, to the city that you're in, 
you know, most of the donors that are giving money and, and um, helping you survive, not thrive, to survive, um, are the people that are in the city. And with that, the pool is very small. And today's, and I said this before, millennials and the Gen, Gen Z, they are not, they have not been growing up to give to the arts. They give to causes that change the world. For them, the arts, they don't see it as changing the world. They don't even have a relationship with the arts anymore because it has become so elite, yes. a special yes. club that you can only go to if you have money. You can only work it into your budget if you have like 100,000 plus a year in income, okay? And so the digital age, going back to last week's episode, did you know that on Clubhouse, you also can monetize now? The people can give you money. Oh, in TikTok, cool. if you're going live, you can make money. You, there are so many options. These platforms are starting to um, open up the possibility for people when they put their content on there for other people to give you money if they like it. I just, so Clubhouse, that's very new. I just saw it yesterday when I was on there. Um, However, that, that's the whole principle of Rice Media too. Do what you can do and get advertisement dollars plus other people's 10 cents. Twitch, same thing. You know, it's all possible. It's all possible. You just have to open up your mind and understand that by you being yourself, mm-hmm. by really showcasing what it's like, you're not giving anything away. Right. Showing the truth is what people want to see. Showing the truth is where, where we're at. We're not here any longer to pretend mm-hmm. something or to be somebody. It's not about that. People can't relate to that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with all of this. I agree with all of this. I, I think um, it's almost, it, it's almost as if the club that we all want to be a part of by by having that energy is absolute to our financial detriment. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> and, and it's coming from and that club is coming from ego. Yeah, exactly. Because we don't feel like we're enough. Yeah. So if, if we had the worthiness to not make it so exclusive and open it up, we would naturally attract more abundance and less lack yes so really it's yeah it comes down to worth yeah it comes down to Mm -hmm. self-worth and and can you find it in yourself versus the applause of other people because that that's for me that that's the um that's the like image and like audible thing that I play over and over my head many times, like over the last like four years. Now, I wasn't that aware four years ago. I'm not gonna give myself that much credit. Worthiness, like two years. Um, The applause was like what I needed. And so I had to figure out how, how to fill my cup my own way instead of the applause. Cause that was just an ego thing. Do you remember, wasn't it um, the payment for an artist is the applause of the audience? Yeah. Remember that story? Yeah. Let's, let's completely unpack that. It is not the truth. It's a bonus. It is your bonus. Totally. It's the bonus draw. Mm -hmm. Like the cherry on top. It is not what's going to give you worthiness. It is not what's going to validate that you are enough. And it's also not going to feed you or pay your rent. So it is not your payment. It is not going to measure up to what money can really give you. It will not give you choices or variety, nor will it give you time. No, No. none of that. No. No. So for that, you really need hard cash. And that hard cash comes from the contract you're under. And you better know your worthiness that you are worthy of earning that money. Because if you're not, you will dance, you will keep dancing for free. You will keep feeling 
unfulfilled because quite honestly, the applause will last you maybe an hour or two hours. And the morning after you will wake up just as empty as you did before you heard the applause. Mm -hmm. that was and me. there we have it. Yeah. Did we solve it? I think so. I <laughs> Crime is solved. <laughs> so now <laughs> maybe next week we are going to talk about solutions. How about that? Yes. I was just, we're, um, oh. we're doing a little telepathy today. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I was going to suggest. A part two of how to's. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's do that. So part two of how to's, um, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, how to yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll come with some good stuff. I got a lot of tools. I had a lot of unworthiness, so I have a lot of things I, I can well, share. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> tune in the week after for part two, where we give you all the tools on how to build up your own worthiness, help others lift up their worthiness, and create the energy of worthiness so we can turn this around. Yeah. You now and get some money in the bank and um, step outside of our comfort zones and let our egos go and do that do its thing but we're over here and we're going to create and we're going to make a lot of money with it all right well thank you love this was um thank you i i this this was a new one for us both like yeah. energetically yeah yeah i have to say it it's just skydiving up. yeah okay. That, yeah, <laughs> totally. I am. I am so in agreement with that. Absolutely. Yeah, you're very cool. You're grounded today. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks everybody Thank you. for tuning in. Don't forget to um, share your biggest takeaway. We would love to know what you thought of this and what really, really um, resonated with you. Um, tag us, and yeah, we will talk to you next week. Till then, bye. Thank you so much for listening. If this message resonates with you, please pass it on to someone who needs to hear this right now. And if you like what you've heard, your feedback will go a very long way. If you just take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review, that would mean the world to me. Till next time, point at yourself to rise to all that you are capable of.